Welcome to Massive Late Fee. And now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name's Mark. With me as always is my gorgeous fiance, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a week here. <laughs> it's May 9th, 1998. It has been a time. Yeah, it's, uh, I was going to say, it, it's not, no, next next month, the 9th, hmm? June 9th, that's 6-9. Um, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? We'll celebrate it uh, next month. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's been quite a uh, week here. This, this tape almost didn't exist. Almost? Yeah, my lovely fiance was... Uh, hospital bound laid up for a couple days but i'm really good at convincing doctors to let me go home yeah luckily all she had to do was flash the goods and they right left. right <laughs> no um no i mean not to get into specifics or anything but uh, we're happy that uh, things seem to be going the right direction and she's uh she's not pregnant for no. <laughs> any of you questioning sorry to disappoint <laughs> but she is home on the men so we're here. Yep. That's how much I love you all. I just got home from the hospital, and we're making a tape. We're making a tape about Deep Impact. What a movie. Speaking of 69, Deep Impact. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> You're so dirty. That's, so That's awful. Deep Impact with Morgan Freeman. Uh, what's her name? Taya Leone? Mm-hmm. And not Teo. The, and others. Te, is it Teo? Teo. Teo. Te, well, I thought it was Te. No, it's Uncle. I thought it was Te Leone. Isn't Teo Spanish for Uncle? Teo, yeah. Yeah, it's Teo. It's Uncle Leone. It is not. No, it's Te Leone. Te Leone. Okay. I think it's Te or Tea. Hmm. Either way, Leone. Anyway, te Leone. <laughs> She's in it. She's in it. And so is other people. Whose that name, is true. Whose, there are a lot of other people. Whose names escape me right now. Oh, the one that looks like Helen Hunt. There's a yeah. little girl in there that looks like little Helen Hunt. A little girl. She. I mean, she's old enough to uh, get married in this movie. That's so. true. And have a baby. Right. I mean, not her own, but... And she marries uh, Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. Remember the good son? <laughs> it's the good son. Yeah, not not the bad son. Not Macaulay Culkin. No. It's the other one. It's the good son. <laughs> Elijah Wood. And uh, Helen Hunt babies. Yeah, that's weird. This girl looks like she's Helen Hunt's daughter, though, seriously. Like, she has exactly her face. Just, you know, toned down like 20 years. Maybe. They should, they should put her on uh, Mad About You. That'd be funny. Uh, anyway, so we saw the movie. Mm-hmm. Carol, my initial thoughts on the film. So this is an, a very human movie. Okay. And what I mean by that is, typically, this is the genre, I'm sure I've told you guys before, this is a genre of movie I normally hate. Disaster movies. Yeah. Because they typically spend the first, like in Volcano or whatever, they spend the first half of the movie, like, ingratiating you to these people, and then it's like... And then they kill them. And then they kill them all. (laughs) And it's like, but it's usually also the most kind of superficial almost because they need you have to split time between the human story and the disaster and they a lot of times they they use shortcuts they they do kind of stock type characters uh and and the performances either carry it or don't carry it that's typically how it goes like twister all those characters in Twister are just like the characters, you know what I mean? Yeah. But but Bill Paxson and Helen Hunt are charming, <laughs> and they elevate underwritten characters. Okay, and actually, a lot of those uh, people, even the Philip Seymour Hoffman, the bad guy from Scent of a Woman, mm-hmm. and uh, some of the other side characters, are good enough actors that they elevate underwritten characters. What's the other guy's name from uh, Princess Bride? He was in it. He was a Carrie Elways. Yeah. Carrie always. He's good too. So, but we're not reviewing that movie. No, we already <laughs> we reviewed that movie two years ago. Yes. My point is this: normally I hate these movies because of their formula, 
This movie I liked, actually, quite a lot. And this movie in the hands of another director. If Roland Emmerich made this movie, the guy that made Independence Day mm-hmm. and the, the Godzilla movie, if he made this movie, it would be schlock. I mean, I famously hated Independence Day. I know a lot of people loved it. But I think it's a schlocky, dumb movie. And just think about it. If Roland Emmerich made this movie, it would just be disaster porn yeah. all over the place. The comet hitting Earth is almost an afterthought in this movie, really. the It's, it's the setup for the action, but we're not focused on the comet. It's only there as a ticking clock and a looming threat. Right. Yeah, I mean, we get to see it. It's cool, but it's definitely not the focal point at all. No, the focal point is the people and the relationships, and they very wisely, I think, break this up into unique perspectives. Mm -hmm. So we have the government-slash-journalistic perspective with Taya Leone and and Morgan Freeman uh, as the president and and her as a reporter. So we have that political kind of... We need to keep everything together. We don't need looting, that that kind of stuff. High level. Yeah. We have the astronauts, the hero factor. Literally high level. (laughs) Right. The The people trying to stop this, the people tasked with with saving our lives and everything. Uh, So, yeah, like literal hero, the hero thing. And then we have normal people, the ground level people with Elijah Wood, uh, Helen Hunt babies, and their family. <laughs> yeah, and they're 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 also ones that get invited to what's it called? The Ark. Yeah, they they they're calling it the, the second Noah's Ark. Because the president the president's been working behind the scenes on this for a while. Yeah, about two about well when the movie opens well, not when the movie opens, when the because we get a little prologue of them actually discovering the comments. Right. Uh, when the action starts it's been a year mm-hmm. of them knowing that this was going to happen. So they have built basically a gigantic bomb shelter. Mm-hmm. In Missouri. <laughs> so it's like underground and they picked, how do you feel about this? Like they picked 800 people at random. Eight, no, 20,000. 20, no, 800,000 people at random. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, sorry. 800,000 people at random and 200,000. That they picked for reasons. Right. And that's another way that the perspectives differ as to who's getting in the arc and who's not getting in the arc. That's true. Um, But I think it's, I mean, it's kind of a good idea. Like, they're putting everything in there so we can repopulate the earth and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it just seems so fucked up. Like, I'm going to choose who lives and who dies. Like, who gets that power? I mean, apparently the president of the United States, but. Well, they're not, he's not picking 800,000 names out of a hat. He's not, like. Pictures aren't showing up, and he's like, them. <laughs> I know they're not fuckable, not them. But then, and then these situations present themselves like they were drawing straws to get on a helicopter. What the fuck was that? I I totally didn't understand this scene. So, well, first let, let's. Okay, beep, I'm sorry. Beep, I'm sorry. Beep, let's <laughs> back up for a second about the numbers. Okay. Okay. The eight hundred thousand people had their social security numbers randomly drawn. So, they, so a computer's randomly drawing right. them. And I think that's fair, you know, to a, to a degree. 80% of the people in there are going to be randomly chosen. So it, it, it eliminates the idea of favoritism, essentially. It's not just going to be rich people. It's not just going to be whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 200,000 of them are picked because they have specialties, they're doctors, they're cutting edge in their field. Whatever. They they have knowledge and skills that we will need to continue. That makes sense, too. Right. I think, actually, I think that plan actually makes the most sense of anything you could come up with, really. It's sad, though, because it's, like, tearing families apart, which well, we, yeah. we don't get to specifically see, oh, I got chosen, mom and dad didn't, but that fucking happens. Although we kind of do in a different way. In a different way, yeah. Because, I mean, can you imagine, though, like, like say uh, you got chosen and mm. I didn't. Oh, it'd be, I wouldn't go. You wouldn't go? No. Aw. That's so sweet. I'd make you go, though. 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'd come back on a bike. But um, in the beginning of the movie, yeah, that's what they do. But in the beginning of the movie, these two teenagers are looking at the sky and trying to identify the thing that turns out to be this huge comet coming mm-hmm. towards the Earth. Yeah. And later, because he was one of the ones that discovered it, this young man and his whole family get to go in the ark. That seems like a waste of only 200,000 slots. Oh, you discovered this with your telescope when you're a teenage boy. I think that's kind of nice, though. It's nice, but like they're saying, oh, they're all picked because of their great in their fields and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, we got these five people. Well, Taya Leone got picked, too, because she was a reporter. I mean, yeah. like, not everyone that gets, not, the, not all the 200,000 people are going to be, trust me, there was government people in there that pulled strings and stuff like that, 100%. Yeah, so I'd say maybe like, 50,000 or 100,000 are actually there because they're the best people to be there. Right. Yeah, you're probably right. But they're not going to advertise that. So, yeah, him and his family are going to go. And then his little girlfriend, who I don't even think is his girlfriend. I think they're just friends. I don't know. We don't. We There's a flirtation in the yeah. beginning of the film, but we don't we don't see a lot of their relationship develop really. Right. I don't think they were boyfriend and girlfriend. I really I really don't. Okay. Um <laughs> They had, they had a closeness for sure. Yeah, they're very good friends. Um, but her family's not been picked. Mm-hmm. So there's like resentment there you can see from her family. She had the unfortunate fate of having her mom be Tasha Yar from Star Trek The Next Generation. And Who always dies. Yeah, we, she can't <laughs> live. So at least it's not a slime monster or whatever that kills her this time. Right. Until she becomes alive again in the uh, when she goes back on... In, in the episode yesterday's Enterprise, which she, you are such a dork. When she she decides in the alternate universe, when she decides to go out to the um, the Enterprise C and uh, fight um, the Romulans or whatever, and you know help uh, form a new alliance where we're not at war with the the Klingons and shit. Okay. Yep. Because then she comes back and she's you know part of the Romulan <clears throat> Council and everything. So Elijah Wood <laughs> yep. um, pulls his own strings because, you know, he has them apparently, even yeah. though he only got in there for like nothing. I'm famous. Um, I haven't used my fame for anything. <laughs> I'll use it for this. And he proposes to this girl. It's a great Elijah Wood impression. It is. He proposes to this girl and says, you can come with me. Yep. And she's like, no, I'm not leaving my parents. He's like, like, I got them in too. Your whole family. I'm That's, sorry. I got them in, too. That seemed a little sketchy, though, didn't it, really? I mean, like, oh, I, I barely got in, but I'm getting your entire family in. I think he's, I think he was lying. Maybe. Seems like it. Um. So she agrees only because her family is supposed to go with her, mm-hmm. and they get married. And they have a little baby. They do not have a baby. Her mother has no, a baby. that's what I'm saying. Her family's got a little baby. Yes, her mother has a baby. And at the last minute, like, they're like, oh, you're not on the list. And he gets on the fucking bus, and she doesn't go with her husband. This, I mean, like, she's like, I'm staying with my parents to die. Mm-hmm. Let her go. Like, I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't understand. Like, he went through all this. You got married. You're supposed to be a husband and wife. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, no, fuck it. I'm going to stay here with my parents and die instead of be with you. Yeah, that was her decision. Yeah. That's insane. I'm not saying it's a smart decision, but that's what she decided. And even more insane, he's on his way to the Ark, and he's like, you know what? No, I'm going to go get this girl who doesn't want me so much that she's going to (laughs) die. You think that's what it was? She thought, she contemplated kissing Elijah Wood, and she was like, (laughs) no, I can't listen to that voice for the next 50 years. Oh, come on. Why not? And she's like, I'd rather die. But he finds her and her family stuck on the road. Like, I think that's stupid, too. Mm-hmm. That's not how I would want to spend my last minutes on Earth. Stuck on a, in, in a traffic, in traffic jam. Yeah. <laughs> but somehow he magically finds them on this overly crowded, you know, freeway. Well, they're supposed to be, like, in fucking New York or something, right? Where do they live? I don't know. Somewhere on the coast. Pennsylvania, maybe? Maybe. That would make sense. Um, because the, the whole point is 
for some reason, and I don't know, I don't, I haven't studied it or anything, so I don't know how realistic or unrealistic this is, mm-hmm. but they they don't know where it's going to hit until a few hours before it hits. And they're like, it, it gets broken into two comets, mm-hmm. and there's a small one and a big one, and it's like, Small one's going to hit here off the coast of New York, and it's going to wash a bunch of fucking tidal waves. I mean, uh, Morgan Freeman basically reads the scene direction from the screenplay to the audience, and they're like, that's what's going to happen. So maybe they're supposed to be in Pennsylvania then, because spo- the wave's supposed to come way far in. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and somehow they make it so that they're just at the edge and the wave doesn't get them. But anyways, the mom gives this girl her baby and says, go with your husband off on, on the motorcycle and live. You know? Now you got a new baby, too. And she's, like, crying, like, no, I don't want to leave you. And it's like, I mean, yeah, I get it. It's sad, but, like, grow a pair. Wow. You were less callous. And, and when we watched this in the <laughs> theater, you were, you were more emotionally invested in the character, I think. Your hospital say has jaded you. <laughs> I guess. I mean, don't get me wrong, okay? It was sad, and I cried. But I was crying for her mother, too. Like, yeah. losing her child. Because it's like, she knows she's going to die, and, and she's, like, letting her children go so they can live with them. I mean, that's got to be awful. Like, the whole... Yeah. Mm. yeah. I felt more bad for her mom than, than her. Yeah. I understand that. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so the, the, we get to see this gigantic tidal wave coming. And they make it to the top of a hill mm-hmm. on this bike. Yeah. And live. Because, of right. course, they do. They're in uh, whatever, the Catskills or whatever. I don't know. Sure. Now, the Catskills are in New York. What's the Excuse one in me? Pennsylvania? I have no idea. I didn't know there was anything comparable. There's one in, in Philadelphia. There's a, I can't remember what it's called, though. There's a little mountain range. Hmm. But. Anyway, so... um. Yeah, they make it. What happens is is that there's this giant comet, and they send Robert Duvall into space with a bunch of people <laughs> with uh, with your so money from Swingers, uh, John yeah. John Favreau. He was so money he got lost in fucking space. Um, it's terrifying too if you think about it. But I'll get to that in a minute. It reminds me of a Ray Bradbury story called. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I think it might be called Astronauts. I don't remember what it's called. But essentially, it's, there's like a disaster on a spaceship, and the astronauts get flung into space, but they're in their spacesuits, and they're just fucking floating. And it's them, like, talking to each other as a, the slowly, like, static comes in and stuff like that, and it's a lot of their thoughts, and it's basically just like, you know, I, I know I'm going to float here until a fucking planet or star picks me up, and it's... Uh, in, in its gravitational pull, and then I just burn up in the atmosphere. Like, they know that that's what's going to happen. Oh, my God. But it's like they could, or, or you know, I, I don't know, they could die of radiation poisoning or, or, you know, something like that before then, I suppose. Starvation it, or dehydration, maybe, or no? Well, dehydration, maybe, yeah, um, before starvation. But could you imagine, like, floating for, like, three days in that's, space? You will never get me off this planet. <laughs> I'm serious. They could be like, I keep trying, folks. <laughs> the whole thing's going to burn up tomorrow. I'd be like, cool, uh, get some marshmallows because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> nope. But anyway, so that happens to John Favreau. It's so sad. Oh my God, that's awful. Then it's even sadder because one of the other astronaut dudes is like his really good friend, I guess. I mean, he, he must have been. He and was he, Russian. He's begging. Yeah, that's true. So they weren't. Yeah. Oh. But he was like begging. He's like, we got to go get him. We got to go get him. It's not right. And then he, they're like, if we go get him, we'll all die. He's like, go fuck yourself. How about that? Um, so, yeah. So the, Robert Duvall and friends uh, go to <laughs> to stop this comet. And we meet their families. Here's one thing that I really like about this movie. This movie, we're, we barely spend any, of t- the time, any time with these astronauts before their mission, their first and second mission. In, in the movie, but we barely spend any time with them. We have one scene where they're at a picnic, essentially, and we have one very quick scene when they're in a bar, right? Mm-hmm. But through that little bit of time and dialogue, we get everything we need to know about their characters. I mean, these are ones that are a little more quickly drawn, kind of like I was talking about, a little more caricature-y. But 
Robert Duvall carries this section yeah. of the movie. Uh, and Mary McCormick is also very good. She's the uh, the one female on the mission, and she's his like co pilot. So they have a lot of scenes together where they're kind of going back and forth. Um, but essentially, their their mission is to land on this comet, drill down inside of it, and put nuclear weapons in it, and then explode them, and that will destroy the the thing, and you'll be good. But, you know, it seems like it would be challenging to do that and get far enough away that you don't get hurt. Right, exactly. Which is kind of what happens, because they, <laughs> they put the stuff in there. It doesn't go exactly right for many reasons. Uh, and for some reason, they only have a certain amount of time when it's dark on the surface of the comet before the sun hits it, and then there's, like, gas venting from it. And, yeah, it's no good. It, the temperature increases by 350 degrees in, like, a minute or something. Yeah. So they have to get out of there as fast as they can. They get out. Uh, they explode the, the nuclear weapons. Fucks their ship up. Just pushes the right. shit out of their ship. Um, but it doesn't destroy the comet. It just blows off a small chunk about a mile wide. And it leaves the rest intact. To finish up their storyline. They're like, what are we going to do? John Favreau's dead. He was so money and he didn't even know it. Um, and he'll never know it now. Uh, <laughs> what are we going to do? Should we stay here? Should we, you know, should we try to get back to Earth? So they, they say, let's go home. So they try to get back to Earth. And um, they do get back to Earth. They beat the comet there. And Robert Duvall the whole time has been working stuff out mathematically. And he's like, you know what? We got four nuclear weapons left. There was this big fissure that was opened up. If we fly the ship in there and fucking detonate these weapons, we could destroy the whole thing. And so he tells them that. And they're all like, okay, so how do we do that and get out of there? And Robert Charles just like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for playing. <laughs> and they're like, okay, so we got to all die um, to do this. And they agree to all die. I mean, I think you kind of have to. Well, yeah. You have a chance to save billions of people. Yeah, there's no, there's no way that that is like, um, I pass. Because like, you're going to die anyway, then. That's true. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, you're going to die anyway. Um, and, and I don't even think they could have reentered. I saw the, the <laughs> front, the cone of that ship. It was fucked up. I, I think if they tried to reenter, the whole thing would burn up in the atmosphere. And one of them, too, had gone blind when yeah. they looked at the uh, sun. Well, they didn't close their heat shield or whatever on their face yeah. fast enough. And um, <clears throat> so that was super sad. Like, they do a lot of emotional things in this movie. They all got to say goodbye to their family members first. Yeah. And he's he's seeing, but not seeing because he's blind, his brand newborn baby. Yeah, for the first time. And he's just pretending like he can see because he mm-hmm. doesn't want them to know that he is not seeing them. Yeah. It was so sad. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, it, the whole thing's really sad. The, but they're they're all excellent actors, um, so they they do they go into the fissure, they blow up, and uh, it works. Yeah, they destroys the big one because the big one was going to hit Western Canada, and it was it was you know nine miles wide. It was going to be an extinction level event. It was going to cover the Earth in ash for at least two years. That's what they needed the Ark for. Mm-hmm. Uh, it turns out they didn't need the arc. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the thing that, that interests me, though, is were this to happen, this exact scenario to play out, we would have been okay. Yeah. Here in Michigan, we're, we, would, we're, we would have been fine. We're in the safe zone. Right, from that particular one. But yeah, it does the one mile one. They can't do anything about it. It does crash off the coast. And, you know. There is devastation. It destroys New York mm-hmm. and, and like Boston, just fucks it up. It's. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of glad that it wasn't just all like, oh, we just blew it up in one and we went through it for nothing. Like there was still a consequence of what was happening in this movie. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't all nothing. I do kind of agree. It, it like it makes sense that there should be a consequence. And Tay Leone got her her, you know. Ugh. Her storyline was probably the saddest. I don't know if it was the saddest, but it was very sad. She, uh, her mom had obviously had a drinking problem, it seems. Yeah. But um, the dad had left her for a woman two years older than Taylioni. Yeah. And he just married this woman, and he's trying to like force her to be friends with her, and it's weird. Yeah, no good. And her mom's very depressed, 
And this whole thing's happening. Now, nobody's going in the Ark over the age of 50. That is one thing that they decided nobody over the age of 50 would go in the Ark, which I guess also kind of makes sense. So that means that both her parents are out. Yeah. His wife, his brand new young wife, left him. So she's probably going to try to get in the fucking ark or something. Right, exactly. Um, so what old guy do I have to sleep with to get in the ark? <laughs> right. So Noah, um, here now, I come. Taylioni was supposed to go in the ark. She got chosen. Mm-hmm. They said because she's a familiar face and people need consistency, which I mean, I kind of get, I guess. I suppose. I think it was also because she learned the secret and didn't betray their trust. Right. Um, but she gives her seat to a woman and their child. Yeah. I got a question about this scene. Like, I was trying to bring this up before. Mm -hmm. They're all at the newspaper place. Correct. And they're drawing straws about who's going to get in this helicopter. Right. She's supposed to be on the Ark. Wouldn't it make sense that, like, she gets on there? Why, why Why? are there straws being drawn? And, and like, she puts this lady on instead of her. If they fly to the Ark, are they going to let her in? They're not going to the Ark. Where are they going? So, she decided not to leave for the Ark for whatever reason. I don't know. That never actually comes up in the movie mm. where she says, I'm not going. She just it doesn't go. She's just go. suicidal. Got it. I guess, yeah. She just doesn't go, right? Uh, so... They've learned, like I said, it's one of those things where it's like we learn late, and I mm-hmm. guess this is the reason. I feel like in reality they'd be able to tell days in advance where it's going to land, but who knows. Uh, but they say, okay, it's going to land off the coast of New York. So if you're in New York or Boston or Philadelphia or any of these cities, get the fuck out. And all the people in the in the newspaper place are like, hey, we've got a helicopter, like all newspaper places do. Instead of trying to fight our way through fucking traffic, right. we're going to fly in the helicopter. However, there's only so many seats in the helicopter. So that's what they're drawing straws for as to who gets in the helicopter. They're not going to the Ark. They're just going somewhere far away from New York City so they're, they're not destroyed by rain and wind. And this is all men, Tay Leone and a woman and her child. And one of the men mm-hmm. says, isn't it supposed to be women and children first? And he's like, uh, well, if you get a seat, you can give it up to, for one of them. Right. Isn't that fucked? And he doesn't get a seat, by the way. No. Uh, isn't he, is he the one that was like, that makes sense or whatever? I don't, I don't know, but yeah. somebody was pissed. Um, but yeah, so this woman with a baby, they're just like, oh, sorry, you're going you're gonna to die. She's like, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. And then, and then you find her, she's almost catatonic, holding her baby later. Like, yeah, because she was going to. She was going to go in, in the car, you know, and stuff. And then she was like, I saw the traffic, you know. I, I can't even imagine fucking New York City. I mean, you got 8 million people yeah. trying to get out, you know. Um, but she was just like, uh, you know, she's like you said, she's almost catatonic. She's in the little, the little like, Nursery day, area. Yeah, daycare area. Her she, her baby is not a baby, It's but probably like, like two. two. Yeah. She's like, she likes it here, so. So I just figured we'd stay here. And it's high, so maybe, you know, and it's like, no, that, that. I mean, we saw that thing once the once the wave actually does come through, it fucking destroys the World Trade Center. So it's going to destroy that shitty little new yeah. building. It's it's like thousands of feet. I think hundreds of thousands of feet. I don't know. It was yeah, really it's big. yeah, it's huge. But um, so yeah, Taylor is like, you're going, you're fucking taking my place. So she gives her a place on the helicopter, and then earlier, uh, after they found out that they were going to all die. Taylor and his dad comes by. Mm-hmm. You have something you want to say? I just want to point one thing out. She didn't nicely say, take my seat. She grabs her child and starts running. That is kind of fucked up, too. She's like, give me this kid. And she just fucking takes the kid and starts running. And she's running after her like, my baby, oh my God. Like She's like, she's like, <laughs> like I, I mean, I think she thought that she was just going to take the baby and leave on the helicopter. That's what I, I mean. That's kind of what it seemed like. It was almost like she was like she was saying, Get this fucking kid, you don't even know what to do with it. Right. You know, and like then when when they finally get to the helicopter, she's like she's like, I'm not taking her. You're going you're taking my seat and going with her. And she's like, What the fuck? Do you think she made that decision on the way? Do you think it, maybe when she grabbed the kid she was stealing the kid? Like <laughs> I don't know, because it was That's a good question. I don't know. I mean maybe she was like, This baby shouldn't die and then she's like, uh, give it to the mom. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe 
it's hard because it does tie in with her dad. Her dad, first of all, her mom kills herself. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, probably like a couple days, two or three days before, and I'm sure there were suicides, uh, but like two or three days before there would be in real life. 100%. Oh, yeah. Uh, so her mom decides to like get all dressed up and stuff like 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 happens a lot of times. Drink when, wine. When, when women kill themselves and uh, ends up killing herself. Uh, the dad's, you know, like whatever. He's, he's not happy about it, obviously. Yeah. But he comes and sees her and is, shows her pictures and stuff. It's like, oh, your mom took these pictures. These were a happy day. Don't you remember? And she's like, no, I don't remember. <laughs> and she's like, I'm, I'm an orphan. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty sad and powerful. She was pissed off. She's super pissed off at her dad because her dad left her mom. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Like I said, and I said, we don't really ever see the dad side of it. We don't. And I think pointedly, we don't ever really see any insight into their relationship. Mm-hmm. We see it from Taylor's side and she's mad for her mom. But it's very possible looking at everything objectively that he wasn't necessarily the bad guy. Yeah. If his wife was an alcoholic with a really bad problem and wouldn't seek help and wouldn't change, like, I mean, he shouldn't marry someone so young. That's fucking creepy. Yeah. But still, uh, doesn't mean that, like, he would stay with her. So, yeah. Well, and the way she says it, too, she's like, at one point, he, she's just met his new wife. He's introducing them. And she's like, no offense to you, Chloe, I think her name was, or whatever. She's uh, like... But, Dad, Mom needs you. You need to go back to her because she needs you right now. And that's probably the dynamic of their whole relationship. Mm. Dad, Mom needs you. That's got to get exhausting. Like, you need to have a a partnership and a back and forth, not Mom needs you always. Yeah, agreed. So, anyway, so he's, like, trying to reconcile with her, and she's like, fuck you. And then she does the thing where she steals the kid. And I don't know, maybe maybe she intended to leave. Maybe she thought of her and her dad. And her and her mom, you know, or maybe that was her plan the whole time. I don't know. That would be an interesting thing to ask the screenwriter and the director what their, and the actress too, what their idea was behind all that. Yeah, because there's definitely, it's left up to us, I guess. Um, But instead, she she goes to the place where these pictures were taken that her dad showed her. And he's also there, so they get to be together and reconcile. She tells him that... uh, she remembers the day and it was a great day and everything and that she does she's not an orphan or whatever and <laughs> this is the most tragic fucking thing ever the uh so the thing hits they're watching it and the the water goes out like how it you know how it recedes before a huge wave like that and it starts coming in you know and all the wind and stuff like that and she just goes daddy <laughs> you know and it's uh the way she says it too, it's just you know, you all the like sadness and fear and 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 everything, you know. It's a very well, powerful. Now moment. I'm crying. <laughs> no, it's a powerful moment. It really is. And like I said, so that I think that one scene encapsulates the essence of what I mean about this movie, because on one hand we have this huge natural disaster with all these special effects that we could have and all the glitz and glamour that we could have with it. And we do get a little bit of that. But the thing that matters about that scene is her saying daddy. Yeah. That their relationship, that's the emotional core of that scene. That's how I would describe this movie. It's such a good movie. It was very good. And it was good because it focused on the people. Yeah. And that's what connects you to it. And Morgan Freeman was in charge with his calming voice. Right. If ever the world is ending, I want Morgan Freeman in charge. <laughs> yeah. I do think it's funny that uh, they uh, they finally cast a black president uh, and then the world ends. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one thing I wanted to point out before we go. Mm. Why'd they have to kill the fucking scientist? Which one? That led to nothing. Oh. The scientist that was like, the scientist that died at the beginning of the movie, the the scientist that was doing the public service announcement against using car phones while you're in the car <laughs> and smoking and drinking jolt soda while you're uh, trucking. Because all those things, 
you know, uh, met in Congress to cause a fire explosion. Yeah. You're right. I don't know. I wonder if, I mean, the movie had to probably be scaled down. I would guess there was a lot going on. So maybe there was more to that that we didn't get to. The only reason I can think of that it, they killed him, because he, he, he finds the thing, he's like, oh my God, fuck. And he's rushing to tell somebody, I guess. And he dies in a car accident uh, on the way there. I guess the only reason is so that they could assume for some reason without looking into it at all that both scientists that discovered it died and so they didn't reach out to Elijah Wood sooner like yeah. but would they cuz he's a kid like I don't know Yeah it was weird why are they involving him anyway So I just don't I don't understand why uh they why he died at all they could have just he could have just discovered it and been like oh my gosh and then you know, we go, but I mean, I guess it's like, it's an action thing or whatever. I don't know. Right. But yeah, it was a very, very good movie. I, I really loved it. I mean, I was dehydrated leaving there because of all the crying. But That's why she was in the hospital. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, you definitely, everybody needs to see it. Just go see it. It was good. It was very, very good. And I would, I'd give it a full throated recommendation. Yes. Uh, but anyway, that is the episode for the week. Carol. So you can write us at latefee1994awol.com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Oh, yeah. And share the tapes with your friends. Oh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.